This is Escape Pod. Visit our website at OutbreakPodcast.com. And now here's your hosts, Tony Brown and David Anthony. Welcome out to this episode of Escape Pod. Tony, I caught you taking a drink. <clears throat> yeah, I have really sucky high blood pressure medicine, and I have this horrible cough from it. So mm-hmm. everybody looks at me if I go to the grocery store thinking I'm spreading corona, and it's just because I got a don't do that. Rate. <laughs> Don't be Tony. <clears throat> Probably enough corona in your mustache to. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Hey, hey, hey. That's hey. fake, though, right? I heard that was fake. <laughs> That's fake. Fake. That's the word going around. The word is going around. The... Oh, Tony. What's up, man? Guess who's back? Rich is back. Rich amazing Davis. Amazing news. Rich is back. Back again. <laughs> okay, that, that's my Eminem impression. You don't ever want to see that again. <laughs> <laughs> He's the real Slim Shady. <laughs> I, I need to stand up then. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, goodness. So, welcome back, Rich. Man. Hey, thanks for having me. Oh, dude, we I love can, having man. you on. We are big fans of your work. I'm in case you had noticed. That. So, you're the, you're the two. <laughs> uh, just I one mean, of well, many. My one of many. One fan, and then there's you guys. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hopefully she'll be watching too. Yeah, uh, she's probably. Wa- I just shared the Facebook uh, or the uh, YouTube live feed, so I'm pretty sure she's probably watching about right now. So yeah. So hi, mom. There you go. There you go. There you go. And uh, let's see. We'll put that about. Oh, look, we're here to there talk about Cult of Dracula. Oh wow! I've got my own like title screen on that. That's pretty rad, man. Yeah. I didn't have it last time. I know. I know. I was. So planning ahead this time. <laughs> oh, here, here, you're gonna like this, Rich, even better. Because if you want all the information, all the latest information, you should go to. <gasps> oh, I have a scroll. You have a scroll, Dang. dude. You guys are you guys are way too good to me, man. I'm really not important enough to have a scroll. <laughs> it's that's, that's like CNN, ESPN level. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not to say we won't switch it out with you know some of ours. Oh, hey, oh, oh it'll come back. Don't worry, it'll be back. Crazy, man. I love <laughs> me. <laughs> All I know is it uh, it cost me enough. But you know, uh, that's one of those things because we we built we spent all this money building a really nice studio, and then coronavirus happened. And it's like we still need to do some podcasts. So you know yeah. what? Got a little nice program, and now we're able to uh, have our guests uh, remotely. Yeah, and you can like have a fake studio because I'm sure you got like the green screen option and stuff, and you got your crawler. We do. crawler. Man, this is awesome, dude. David does. I, I'm I'm using my phone, setting on top of a Scotch whiskey box, and what's propping my phone up is one of my handguns. So that's 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 my studio. <laughs> Scotch podcast <laughs> and handguns. Oh, see. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, at least you didn't drop the gun. I was gonna say, at some point we're in here, we'll see the phone drop and oh, oh, Jesus. No. <laughs> yeah. Now here's but the real you, question: Is it good scotch? Uh, well, I don't like scotch, so there's no such thing as good scotch to me. Wow. But it's one of my wife's Glen Morangi scotch boxes. Okay, it tastes like plastic and moldy moss to me i just i can't oh, get down the, with the that's, scotch that's the aging process yeah she says that's the great thing about scotch and, uh, yeah. well, i'm not a not scotch um <laughs> it's, it's a little too harsh yeah. For, um, yeah i did the test in when i was in college where they find out if you're a super taster or not and i am a super taster to bitter um so oh. if something is bitter at all it's like You've seen that episode of The Simpsons where Homer gets his new taste buds. If I get something bitter, it's like it's like that. And um, <laughs> scotch is not my friend. No, I, I don't see how people drink that stuff. Mm-mm. I mean, hey, if you enjoy it, you enjoy it. But it, it's not not for me, man. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but yeah, that's my setup. So you can tell that, you know, David over there, he's he's our tech guy. Right? So, he's fancy. I am. I am. What do you mean? Is that a... <clears throat> expensive mic friendly what <laughs> right well, don't he sounds just as good as i do my my tablet you know and then that that would be pretty awesome 
<laughs> well, I, I think you got this works though. That's all that matters. <clears throat> Yeah, able to get the able to get the information out to the, to the people. Yeah, as long That's as you right. can hear me, we're gold. That's uh, right. Yeah. And if and if you're all watching this uh, live uh, on YouTube, uh, there is of course the um, the chat box, live chat. You can actually put in uh, uh, questions there, and they will they will come up um, under comments, and mm -hmm. we can uh, talk about those too. So if some come in, uh, we may throw them uh, at Rich. Yeah, and I can actually <laughs> see those now. You can. Yeah, there you go. Oh goodness! Let's see okay. here. Uh, After I wasted like six minutes talking about nothing, why, why are we here again? <laughs> I, I forgot. Oh, let me see. <laughs> we are here. Um, One of us see. makes an awesome comic book. That's why we're here. Yeah, you. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you guys make the awesome comic book because you read it. I just wrote the thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there we go. That's hey. dot com. That's right. That's right. There is the uh, the uh, the website. Got all sorts of great information. Really cool stuff on there. And, where you uh, can... your episode two is getting ready to episode issue issue two. There we go. Issue yep. two. Yep, it sure is. Yeah. Drop. yeah. There's yeah. You can you can still order. Um, I think. Mm, well, cover A is still available on the Cult of Dracula website. Uh, covers B and C uh, sold out recently because um, wow. we had some news break that um, it we we got so many hits on the website that it actually crashed the website, and um, so um, we had to uh, we had to pull our inventory off of the Cult of Dracula website um, so Oops. that uh, we could keep. <laughs> oh, there's the, yeah, there's the trailer. Um, we just uploaded to our Facebook page a new trailer for um, uh, issue uh, issue two uh, with all new music and everything. So my friend Nick Smith did these. He's a very talented filmmaker, and um, you know he's playing around with making a comic book trailer for the first time. But I I adore this. Um, yeah, it's awesome. My friend Stu McNeely and his band um, Igor's Lair did um uh they did this the music uh, which is an original version kind of a bluegrass version of house of the rising sun so oh, it's amazing yeah it's awesome yeah. and all that can be found on the website mm -hmm. <clears throat> all right Ooh, i'd kill that there a little bit a little loud sorry <laughs> i don't know if you guys can still hear but I was, uh but no it's awesome and we'll get us jump there we go <laughs> Dave's still playing with buttons. <laughs> Yay. I feel like um, I mean, it's like an ESPN show where like they set the people up like this with this type panel and everything. And I, I don't know what the name of the show is, but I kind of feel like that right now. So I think <laughs> I'm going to have to talk about sports. So Rich, uh, tell us all about the uh, latest events going on. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> where to begin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so, so obviously your, your issue one came out and, mm -hmm. Talk about his success. I think it was pretty successful. Yeah, it really was. Um, I, I honestly, blown away by the success of issue number one. We sold um, more than 10,000 units. Um, wow. which is fantastic when you think about, you know, this is, a, this is an indie book from uh, a small publisher that had never put out a book before. You know, Cult of Dracula was their first book. Mm -hmm. uh, this was my first comic. Uh, people had no idea who I was. Um, and we didn't have distribution through diamond, you know, we were doing this all on our own. You know, I was literally spending six, seven hours a day, uh, picking up the phone and calling comic book shops and introducing myself and talking to them about cult of Dracula and what we were doing with it. And I was sending emails to them and I was doing amazing podcasts like yours. You know, I mean, it was like three full-time jobs just to, um, you know, just to promote this book. But in the end, it was worth it because 96 stores uh, in the U.S., two in Canada and or three in Canada and one in the U.K. Um, ordered the comic. And, you know, we sold over 10,000 units, which is which is insanely cool. That is yeah, awesome. Cool. And people are actually loving it, too, man. It's getting really good reviews like uh, the Amazon reviews. If you guys have read it, go on to uh, Amazon and give us a review on the Kindle version. That really, really helps. Um, plus, a lot okay. of outlets uh, reviewed it. Um, and, uh, you know, so that was a really cool thing. Not only are retailers uh, buying it, but their customers are picking up and they're reading it and the customers are enjoying it. So 
for me as a comics creator, there's no better feeling than that, uh, than to know that people are really digging the work, you know? Yeah. Well, it, it's, it's just, so very it's a, we talked about the first time it's, it's the book that brought me back into comics after, you know, over a 20 year hiatus of just wow. not reading anything. That's amazing. I, I love so, every time you say that. I, I love it. Cause <laughs> now that means you're back into the fold. You're back into the comics community and we missed you, man. We're all yeah. we're waiting on you. We need you to be back eventually. So, you know. Yeah, it just it just took something this awesome. I mean, such a you know, I mean, you can't go wrong with Dracula one, and then right. just the spin that you've put on it. You know, to throw a Manson esque mm -hmm. character in there, and then just switching all the characters around. It's just I don't I don't man. I just sometimes I'm speechless. Like yeah, I've reread issue number one like twenty different times. Wow. Just, you know, and then, you know, and then, you know, I read it and just looking for little things, you know, like we talked about last time and mm -hmm. then just going through and not even reading and just looking at all the art. Just yeah. Henry's it. art. Uh, Henry Martinez, of course, did the art um, and it's gorgeous. It is such yeah. cool art. And Trevor Richardson's colors really just highlight um, that artwork. Uh, it, it has a really cool 70s uh, vibe to it, which is what I wanted. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, Henry and I were on the same page when we were talking about um, our art styles and what we wanted out of the book. So, you know, it's not, you know, Henry's art is not, you know, slick and digital, you know, it's not Art Germ or Shannon Mayer, you know, they're, those guys are amazing artists, but that's not the style we were going for. We wanted something that felt a little more vintage, a little more gritty, a little more grindhouse. And, um, and Henry was able to, to deliver that in spades. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's definitely just it, it's beautiful. I mean, I don't, I don't know how else to say it. You know. <clears throat> it is, it is, it is very, very well done book, and and I, I love that. It's basically all the elements to me came together. Mm -hmm. It's the great story. It's it's the writing. It's your angle, your spin on it, plus the amazing art, and um, and it really leaves you wanting more. And the, the first issue was like, uh, yeah. yeah. We're in a binge watch society, and I'm like, I need 10 right. issues. Like, oh, where's the next, where's the next issue? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, exactly. I sent it to you guys um, earlier. I think I was a little late sending it to you, but uh, That's okay. you have it in your uh, in your messenger box, so you can you can read issue two and um, review yeah, I forwarded it. forwarded it to Tony so he could check it out, too. Yeah. He's looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. I've, it, I've already uh, got to the point where the last page has got me like, really? Yeah. Okay, let's come on. I need, <laughs> yeah, I need the next one now. Well, I gotta. I I say this without hyperbole. You ain't seen nothing yet. Oh yeah. This <laughs> book, um, the further you go on this journey, um, the the more batshit crazy it gets because it's like, um, you know, the longer Alice stays in Wonderland, the more chaotic and insane Wonderland becomes, and so it's the you know. It, you're when you go into issue one, you've kind of got your floaties on, you know, and then the deeper into it by the end of issue two, those things have already about halfway deflated and you're just, you're spinning out of control. And um, so we start to introduce in issue two, we start to introduce a lot more of the supernatural elements to it. Um, there's a lot more, um, a lot more about the vampires. We get to see them. Um, and then by the time you hit issue three, I mean, this is where the, you know, the, the climax or what you think is the climax starts to happen um, when things get really chaotically out of control. Um, and then, you know, that just propels us into issues four five and six. So I'm really happy that the book has, uh, that momentum and that pacing you were talking about because, um, you know, and our, our professional reviewers and also the fans who have reviewed it have all remarked about that, that it moves, um, with a very cinematic pace, which is something yeah. important to Henry and myself. Um, so, you know, we don't, we don't waste a lot of time on exposition. Um, you know, we, we keep it moving. We tell you what you need to know. And then if you want to go back and reabsorb it later, you can, but we don't, you know, what I love is Henry's art is so effective in conveying what I wanted to get out in the story that I don't have to waste a lot of space with like a, a text wall that you just right. have to labor through reading, um, you know, cause th those can get a little dull um, and you can lose readers that way. But the, the book moves at a very, very good pace. 
Um, and that's a that's a testament to Henry's art and um, you know to uh, to our editor um, Amber David. My wife Amber is the editor, um, nice. and so uh, she helped keep things uh, moving along at a really really strong pace, and we love it. Uh, and, hey, what's up, and, Ken? and your story is really really good too. You know. Oh, thank I guess, you. Uh, 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 Tim here that just popped into the comments. Um, he uh, he um, <laughs> look he, see the question popped up. Yeah, <laughs> and um, he, he did a beautiful uh, store exclusive cover of issue number two uh, by David uh, uh, Sanchez, and it is stunningly gorgeous. And they're still available on his website. So if you guys get a chance, go check this out. Gorgeous, gorgeous art. Um, and uh, Tim's been a really big supporter of the book. So good to see you, man. Awesome. Yes. Yeah, and if any questions or anything come up, just uh, throw them out there, man. We'll uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll put uh, Mr. Davis in his butt. <laughs> yeah, uh, I definitely like the some of the panels that, like you were saying, don't have a just this huge context of uh, of text, really. Because mm -hmm. I like it because it it allows me to think what maybe the characters are thinking in my mind. Mm -hmm. You know, just like, oh, my God, what's happening right here? What could they possibly be thinking? Right. You know, without being told what they're thinking. And that just that keeps it exciting for me. Yeah. And, you know, that to, in order to make that happen, you know, I, I had to be humble enough to trust Henry, my artist, to convey what I needed to get across without um, resorting to a lot of expositional dialogue. So. And then also Henry and I had to trust each other and uh, we have just an amazing relationship as a creative team because he's, he's gotten to the point where he can just kind of sense where I want to go. And I'm already, as I'm writing things, I'm already picturing how he's going to draw it. So, you know, we've got a really cool symbiosis going on there and it's, it's, it, you know, the proof's in the pudding, man. And it, it's, it's been a really cool, uh, again, I'm biased, you know, to it. But <laughs> proud of this uh this product especially henry's art and trevor's uh trevor's colors man it's gorgeous well yeah. um just to say that you you may be you know obviously it's it's your baby it's it's your work but you know bef before you reached out to me i i didn't know you or all your work and it truly is impressive so uh, I don't necessarily know that my opinion carries that, that, that much weight, but, uh, well, I, I carry a lot of weight, but my <laughs> opinion may not, uh, but, uh, but yeah, no, it's, uh, <laughs> thanks, but it's, um, it really, it really is well done. I mean, and like I said, it really, it starts with the writing and, you know, because if you didn't have the intensely great writing, um, that's the only way I can describe it. It's just, um, it, it just really, it, pulls you in and makes you want to know everything about these characters. And you just know that there's so much more yet, yet to um, yet to unfold. Mm -hmm. so. I, I cannot wait for readers to pick up issue two in a couple of weeks and um, to consume that. And then, um, you know, we'll come back with issue three um, soon after, you know, and I just can't wait till more people get into the story um, because I really want to share it with people. I want people, I've been marinating on this story for a long time. And so to finally get it out there for people to consume and enjoy. And uh, you know, uh, it, it's a really cool feeling. So I'm just as excited about hearing what you guys think about it as you are waiting, um, you know, to get the next issue. So like, I'm just, you know, I'm like, Ready. Come on. What do you think? What do you think? Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> you keep sending us uh, <laughs> the uh, digital issues and uh, we'll give you all the opinion you want. Trust me. We uh, love I it. We, we both do. We really do. Yeah. Um, now, um, so obviously the success is, is phenomenal and, you know, so far, and it's, this is just the beginning. I mean, it is, this, this hasn't even taken off yet to, to the heights it's going to, I guarantee it. Um, so, so, so with that success and, and your publisher, you've um, you seem to be kind of growing. What's uh, what, what, what's what's new that you can talk about that, uh, you know, yeah, to let us um, know what's going on? Well, a couple of big things. Um, I think the um, the most important thing probably for the listeners right now mm -hmm. is that um, the Cult of Dracula has moved away from Second Sight Publishing um, and we're taking the book over to SourcePoint Press. Um, the, we had a great relationship with Second Sight. They did um, an amazing job supporting me 
and helping me carry the book um, this far. But as uh, Marcus Roberts, who is their editor in chief, as he uh, you know, very humbly told me, he said, look, we've taken this book as far as we can. Um, so they were very willing to let the book go um, to source point where, um, you know, we're it's a larger publisher. Uh, they have more resources. They have more infrastructure. They have more relationships with uh, distributors and, um, you know, namely Diamond Comics. Uh, and those were things that uh, Second Sight, unfortunately, wasn't in a position right now to be able to achieve for the book. And I'm very grateful to uh, to Spike and to Marcus uh, and Bradley at Second Sight for being um, gracious enough to recognize that and to put what's best for my career and my book ahead of what short term gain their, you know, their company might have gotten off of this. Because, you know, whereas we're hoping, you know, since we sold 10,000 books with um, with Second Sight, we're hoping to double that uh, when we go to uh, to source point um, and when we get into Diamond. Um, you know, that's going to require me going right back to day one. The only thing the only thing I know how to do is work hard. Um, and uh, so now that we're going to source point, now we're going to be in Diamond. I'm not the kind of person that's going to be content to just let it be um, in previews and just hope that people pick it up. Um, I'm going to be calling comic book shops. Uh, I've some of you have already called. I've called them before. Um, some I didn't get to talk to. Some refused to talk to me. You know, but maybe now, uh, maybe now they'll listen. Uh, maybe they'll have that conversation. But I want to have as many conversations with as many comic book store owners uh, all across the country um, as I possibly can because the direct local comic book shop market that is the heart and the foundation and the soul of the comic book hobby and we i as a creator i cannot do what i want to do without the support of local comic book shops so um you know my goal between now and january um when um when cult of dracula will be in diamonds previews magazine my mm -hmm. goal is not to celebrate Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's. I'm going to be working. I'm going to be calling as many shops as I possibly can. Um, and I want to have those conversations. I want to get to know the shops. I want to get to know, you know, what I can do as a, you know, a tiny little nobody of a creator to help them um, and uh, really build those relationships. Because I think if we can build those relationships strongly when we re when we re-release issue number one with SourcePoint, then we'll be able to uh, sustain the growth and the momentum of the book as it progresses. And uh, because it's all going to be about those relationships with the store owners, because they're going to be like, hey, you know, that's my friend Rich's book. I want to support that. And I want to recommend that to my customers. And then their customers are going to say, hey, I know that dude. And um, my my LCS owner really supports him. So I want to recommend it to my friend. Uh, but, it, you know, I think the success of um, of Cult of Dracula for sure, and maybe for comic books in general, is going to be all about the relationships that we're able to build um, with because we are a community. Some people look at this as a business and it is a business. I mean, there's profits and losses and all that crazy stuff that goes into capitalism, um, you know, that 90 percent of us don't fully understand. It's all there. But it's also a hobby and it's also a community and it's also it's about the people more than the the profits, um, you know, so we really working hard to build more relationships with more retailers and stronger relationships with the ones we already have. Yeah, uh, and, and if somebody was to if you if, I guess the, the best way to explain why you should support comic book stores in that medium of paper comic books is, <clears throat> you know, if you take a if you take a step back. 30, 40 years ago, you know, and, and, uh, or you, 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 I'm doing this badly. All right. So you're looking at like <laughs> today when you have all these, you know, the Avengers movies and all these superheroes and comic books and Iron Man and, and Superman, you know, Batman, all these great franchises that are film icons out there. <clears throat> they didn't start in the other medium except for comics. comics. That's yeah. where they started. That's right. You know, it's like, oh, The Walking Dead's a great show. I love the show, and I do love the show. But where did it start? Yep, right. Comics. It's amazing how fertile of a field the comic book um, industry is for the other entertainment that we consume today. 
you know, it, it's almost to the point where it seems like every movie that comes out is a comic book movie. Yeah. I, I joke with my wife. I watched uh, Ford versus Ferrari um, on uh, HBO Max um, mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago. And I looked at her and I was like, wow, I forgot they made movies like this. You know, and what I meant was this wasn't based off of a comic book. Right. Much every movie that we and even movies that you wouldn't think were originally comic books. Um, you know, so pretty much every movie that we watch now began as a comic or was heavily influenced by a comic book. And so if we don't support um, if we don't support the paper, you know, the traditional uh, comic book format and we don't support the local comic book stores, then eventually we're not going to have comic book movies and we're not going to have comic book video games and comic book television shows and all that stuff's going to go away because, you know, the entertainment industry, they're just going to go and look for the next best thing and the next big right. deal. Um, and um, so, yeah, it's, it's really important to support your local comic book shop, especially um, for indie publishers and indie creators you know, because if you're Marvel and DC, if you've got <clears throat> if you've got the bat symbol on your book, you're going to sell 30, 40, 50,000 copies. It doesn't matter. Same thing with Spider-Man. You know, that stuff sells it. But if you don't support the small press books and the genre books, then eventually those books aren't going to be there. And all you're going to be able to read is Batman and Spider-Man. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, some people like like a movie like uh, like Red with. Bruce Willis. Yes. That's a, that was a comic book, comic. you know, you know, the crow, which is one of my comic. favorite movies. Yep. Comic. Yep. You know, it, it, there's a lot of those. And, uh, Tony Todd. There you go. There you go. And I mean, if you went through uh, and just started naming off like some franchises, you know, people be like, you know, that was a comic book. You know, you just, you just don't, you people, a lot of people don't know. Uh, yep. Rich, can I, uh, can I? Uh, I'm gonna try something. If it's start with you, uh, to show um, your new cover that will be coming out once you yeah. publisher. Yes, and yeah, then let's, we'll talk about what that is. <clears throat> let's see if this works. Hey, yeah, it worked. Yeah, there it is. Roll that beautiful bean footage. It's so awesome. <laughs> we, we covered up Rich. I'm sorry, Rich. <laughs> That's a funny want to look at this. This. Is <laughs> <laughs> oh well I'll, I'll i'll take it back off here in a second but uh but no that's um put it over Tony. I, I, I can't move it around that way i mean i could do this hey there, there, there you go oh Tony, what are that. you doing behind that gorgeous <laughs> you know i know what he's doing he's tweaking his mustache uh -huh. hey now <laughs> so but yeah that's, um, a, that's a look at the artwork though that is beautiful it is yeah I, I, I don't know if I'm right or not, but like with the first book, I think this is an homage to something. I don't mm -hmm. know if I'm right or not, and I can't you figure are. it out. Okay. Yep, okay. you are. Um, so this artwork uh, is by Gula Nemeth. Uh, he's, a, uh, he's a Hungarian um, comic book artist. Uh, he's probably best known for uh, his uh, work on Criminal Macabre. Uh, but he's done a lot of other uh, comics as well. But Criminal Macabre is certainly uh, is how I discovered his work. And um, I honestly never thought um, that I would have the opportunity to work with him. Um, but I saw he he posted on Facebook and I happened to be a friend of a friend of his. And I was like, man, I love his art. I would really love to get him to do some covers for me. And so I just reached out to him on Facebook and um, we started talking and come to find out, not only is he a huge vampire fan, he's also a huge Dracula fan, and he's also a huge fan of the Hammer films, which that checked all three boxes for me right there because, you know, uh, I loved the Hammer films. I watched them uh, when I was way too young to watch them and, you know, probably <laughs> scarred and demented me for life. Um, but we love that kind of 60s, 70s grindhouse feel. Um, and this um, this cover here is actually an homage to a European version of, oh, I see you peeking out there, <laughs> <laughs> to a European version of, um, of a Hammer Films uh, one sheet. And Gula actually has it hanging in his uh, studio. Um, and so he, um, <clears throat> he, he did the cover for issue two as well. And, um, we were talking about, um, you know, doing more covers and he said, look, I have this idea. I know you didn't ask for it, but, um, I kind of drew this sketch out, 
um, tell me if you like it. And um, he sent me uh, what he called a rough draft of this. And honestly, guys, the rough draft would have been perfectly fine to go to press with because his art is just that beautiful. Um, and I just immediately fell in love with it. Um, and I, I cannot wait until this hits the mass market because I think this this cover alone is going to sell comics. Um, oh, you know, yeah. it's just gorgeous. And it says so much about the book um, and what it's about without giving anything away. I mean, it tells you this is, you know, this is horror. This is classic. This is grindhouse um, mm -hmm. culty. This is occulty. It's vampires. Uh, and it also tells me that it's, it's something different because these, uh, these three women here, these are, um, uh, these are characters that you're going to meet actually in issue number two. Um, those are uh, Dracula's brides. Um, you know, the, the brides are, are, iconic staples of the Dracula mythos. And I think in Cult of Dracula, I think they're going to be the breakout popular characters. Um, you know, I, I think that people will, you know, th these are the characters. If, it, if people cosplay at conventions from Cult of Dracula, oh, these, yeah. these are the characters that they're going to, um, uh, they're going to cosplay. And so when I was creating them, um, I wanted to give them, um, more credit than they're normally given because they're so important to the Dracula mythos, but a lot of times they're just kind of tossed aside or they're kind of created, kind of treated like the Borg where they're like a hive mind. Um, so <laughs> in Cult of Dracula, these brides of Dracula are three unique independent women who have their own backstories, their own histories, and their own role in mythology. And when I say mythology, I'm not talking about gods and monsters. I'm talking about the stories that we've told around campfires for thousands of years about the creepy things that are out just outside the ring of fire. You know, what is the, the these are these are the things that the fire is keeping away in the darkness. So, um, you know, one of our brides um, <clears throat> was a Viking scald. You know, so a, a Viking witch, a wise woman. Um, another one was um, was a Japanese uh, witch, and then uh, one was a Nubian priestess. So you know, our Dracula in Cult of Dracula has been around. Well, what you'll find out in the book, literally been around since the beginning uh, of time. It's a it's almost a primordial force, um, and. So as Dracula has grown and changed and passed down the lineage from generation to generation, she's also chosen um, acolytes from different eras. So um, that's that's how we get our our uh, vampire brides. Um, so you'll fully get to meet them in you, you get a tease of them in issue one um, and you fully get to meet them in issue two. Um, so, and I can't wait for that, but this cover, um, is going to be the first cover coming out from, uh, source point press. It will be in the diamond, uh, previews for January and it will hit store shelves, uh, in early March. Um, what we're doing with source point, which I'm really excited about, um, source point, number one, they're very passionate about the book. Um, and I'm actually honored <laughs> because they're actually very passionate about working with me. Um, which that was kind of, that was flattering, um, you know, cause I was, I'm a guy who my whole life, I was never, I wasn't the guy you picked to do things. I kind of forced my way in. Um, <laughs> I, I just don't know what the word, um, no means in most contexts. There's a very important context where I do know what the word no means. Um, but we're not going to go there. Um, but <laughs> tell me I can't do something or they don't want me to do something. I generally try to find a way to do it. And I usually do it on my own. So for source point to um, say that they really want to work with me based on the reputation I've been building and what they see as, you know, potential for long-term success, not only with cult of Dracula, but with other books that was very flattering um, to me because uh, that's really about the first time that's ever happened in my life. So I was very, very grateful for that. So, Source point, what we're doing, we're putting, we're going to go back and we're going to re-release issues one and two uh, from source point. Um, now we're not just going to reprint the first two issues um, and just say, Hey, buy this because we want you to buy it. Um, right. 
Henry and I were very <laughs> insistent, and of course the guys at Source Point were 100% on board. Um, we're going to do these. Uh, we're calling them Cult of Dracula Remastered Editions. So we're coming out with brand new cover art, uh, which by Gula Nenneth, which you can see both issues are going to have new color cover art. Uh, we're also, Henry's going to go back in and fix some of the art that he's not exactly happy with. Um, so you're going to get brand new art on the cover and on the interior. And we're also adding um, bonus content to each of the issues that we're calling Brahms case files. Um, <clears throat> Very cool. Yeah, and these case files are um, basically Agent Brom, who you meet in issue, issue one. These are his investigative documents as he's investigating the cult of Dracula. So it's kind of like the who's who of the Marvel Universe. You're going to get like bios of the characters and backstory. So it's kind of a, you know, kind of a, a, a pocket story within the book. So um, there's that gives you a reason, I think, to go out and buy. If you've already purchased a copy of Cult of Dracula from Second Sight, um, you've definitely got a reason to go back and buy Cult of Dracula number one again from uh, from Source Point Press because you get bonus content, you get you get more for your money this time. Plus the original issues that uh, will be out of print at some point mm -hmm. will become rarities on their own. Just oh, saying. good lord, <laughs> that, is, that is incredibly crazy. Um, the um, the number of retailers who are selling out um, is incredible. Um, you know, we get emails from the shops all the time. Hey, can you get me more copies? Can you get more copies? I'm like, no, nah, I'm sorry, dude, they're gone. And, yeah. um, you know, we um, <clears throat> we made another big announcement a couple weeks ago um, about uh, adapting uh, some well, I'll just throw it. Um, Cult <laughs> Director has been optioned. It's now under development for a film project with mm. short pictures. Um, and wait, 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 sorry. With who? <clears throat> sure pictures. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, so they're they're a um, they're a, a film company that is they've primarily been known for making um, reality television. They've done shows for AMC, for Netflix, Hulu. Uh, Discovery Channel, Food Network, um, but they also have a scripted um, division, and that's what they want to start putting their focus in. So, been working with producer Jerry Corita. Um, he did Comic Book Men, um, so you guys probably have seen Comic Book oh, Men. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so he was uh, one of the producer or the producer of that, um, and so been working with him. He really he's very passionate about the book. Um, and you know, he said, uh, he said, I've done a lot of reality television in my life, but, um, I want to do something that I'm proud of. And he said, I want to do cult of Dracula. And so I was like, okay, well, let's do this. And, um, so they're taking it in, uh, they're, they're creating a pitch, probably going to do a rip matic for it, uh, which rip matic is kind of a, a proof of concept trailer, um, which is something kind of cool. Um, they're going to like piece you know, they'll piece together clips from other movies that would fit the style of what we want to do with Cult of Dracula. And they'll use that to shop it to different networks and investors and things. Um, so the film development project it's, uh, process is very long and involved, um, but we're going well, well down the road on that now. And we're, we're with the right people and uh, there's already strong, strong interest from several uh, outlets. Uh, we don't know if we're going to do this as a, as a streaming thing, or if we're going to go for like a direct DVD release or, or what we're going to do. We, we right. got a lot of options on the table right now, which is exciting. Um, well, make sure that shot the value of the, of the comic up. I mean, it, it, um, it crashed our website um, twice <laughs> on the day that the, that bleeding cool and key collector leaked the news um, that we'd been optioned. I mean, Holy cow, the speculators went bananas over the book. <clears throat> I, I don't, I don't personally, I, I can't see this world fitting into just a two hour movie, you know, two yeah. hour plus movie. I just, I, it's, it's already just, just from the two issues that are in my head. Mm -hmm. I mean, this can stretch for seasons mm -hmm. and seasons as a streaming show, in my opinion. I hope so. And there's there's a lot of potential. I mean, you know, the 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 entire saga. Um, God, that sounds pretentious to call it a saga. Uh, <laughs> so no, it doesn't. The entire saga um, is laid out to be 18 issues uh, broken into three volumes. So um, 
And this was very much inspired by my love of Hammer films. So the first volume is called Cult of Dracula. The second volume is going to be called Rise of Dracula. And the third volume is going to be called Reign of Dracula. So that fits right into that mm-hmm. Hammer style that I love. I'm um, excited. Yeah, right? Uh, exactly. Could I mean, with, with, with 18 issues um, and all the stories that we can tell, the characters that we're introducing, um, you know, yeah, it, it could, I could see it working very, very well as a, um, as a series. Um, that would be my ultimate goal for it. I would, that my ideal for that to happen. Um, but I could also see it being broken down into a trilogy of, you know, 90 minute horror films. Um, yeah. So again, we've got options, you know, um, and we don't know exactly where it's going to go, but we know it's going somewhere. Yeah, that, that's just exciting. I mean, it is. Yeah, that, that's that's awesome news. But um, to kind of go back a little bit, how you were saying that just that that second cover is going to sell issues. Oh yeah, that's, I think that's going to be a huge merch seller too. I mean, oh, yeah. I, I, I'm thinking of that. You know, I think we need to do like some posters and T-shirts. Yes. Dude, that heart is gorgeous. Yes, it is. It is. Well, that's something I was just trying to throw in there is that uh, make sure as you make your movie deals and all this kind of stuff that you get a really nice percentage of merch. Yeah. Make sure your merchandise <laughs> percentage is, is learn good. The, uh, learn yeah. the George Lucas way. Exactly. I was going to say, this is a continuation of Star Wars because of the merch rights. That's all right. I'm saying. So yeah, I would, so. Uh, I would love to see um, uh, like a like a game developed out of Cult of Dracula, and that's that's another cool thing about working with SourcePoint is they uh, they also own Deepwater Gaming. Um, so you know, there, there's potential that we could you know we could develop this into a tabletop game. Um, you know, um, so there, there's a lot of things that we could do that you know if when you talked to me, what we were almost what four or five months ago when we we mm-hmm. spoke last. You know, things that I were not even anywhere on my radar or that I could even possibly imagine could happen. They're starting to happen. And um, it's really cool. And it's really overwhelming. Um, and, dude, as as a fan of comic books who grew up just thinking like, man, what how cool would it be to have a comic that people wanted to read to be able to do this right now, man? It, it is it is every bit as cool as I dreamed it would be, um, and I, I'm just I I keep joking, half joking, by saying I don't know when my 15 minutes is up, but I'm going to enjoy every single second that I have. Well, it's going to last a lifetime, Rich. That's all I can say to you. I hope so. so. Uh, we're, we're right there with you. We're going to support you and back you any way we can because uh, we en- we enjoy what you're doing right now, and and just can't. I mean, just. No, just the, even your 18 issues spread that you're teasing. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's exciting. It's very exciting. And um, the, other, the other cool thing that I love about the, the, the way it's broken down, just like a good uh, hammer film, um, these things are happening in the same universe, but they're not exactly happening at the same time. So issue. Um, so volume one cult of Dracula is a very small, intimate story um, set in one particular um, area in uh, it could be Appalachia anywhere. Um, you know, it could be any small town anywhere. That was important to me for the setting to be relatable to as many people as possible. In every small town, there's a weird church somewhere. You know, there's these roads you don't go down. Um, and so you don't want to be Tony's like, driveway. Yeah. <laughs> just, so Tony, just, you're in your small town. Yeah. Um, so volume one cult of Dracula is very Toby Hooper, Texas chainsaw massacre. We're focused on this family, you know, this, this cult. But then when we get to issue two, you know, we jump several years into the future. Things from, uh, things from, uh, volume one have happened. It's changed things and it broadens out more into a John Carpenter um, horror film where just um, or, you know, kind of escape from New York almost type thing where the world is just fucked. Um, And um, so and then volume three, it grows into just pure pandemonium. Um, And so that's that's where we get Reign of Dracula. So, um, you know, the story, uh, 
there's so much potential for where the story can go. So I, I really hope that readers and retailers continue to support it so that we can get there and then I can finish telling this whole story. Nice. nice. I'm going to get like, you yeah. a, get a little loop there, don't I? Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Sometimes mm -hmm. it just happens. <laughs> Nope, nope, no volume, anything else. So we're good. Anyway, um, but I'll, uh, I'm going to get you um, uh, some of our, well, there's at least one local comic book store here. And then there's one in Evansville as well, too. That's pretty close. We're going to get you those uh, information. I'll message you that so you can reach out to them. And, um, you know, and of course, if you ended up making any kind of pilgrimage to those places, um, then, sure. you know, we'd be there and, uh, you know, yeah. record it and all that kind of good stuff for you. That's been really cool. Um, I've actually gotten to do a couple of store signings. Um, some of the stores have invited me out. And that is an overwhelming experience. And it's so cool. <laughs> I mean, it really is. Um, I like halfway through the first one, um, I had Henry Martinez and George's Genty. Uh, they were both there with me. And the guys from Second Sight were there. And like, we've been going for like, I don't know. I, I thought it seemed like we had to have been there for like eight hours. And I looked at the clock and we'd only been there for like two, um, but we had <laughs> such a huge line of people buying the book and we're, we're meeting them and we're, you know, we're telling stories. It was kind of like a mini con really. And, you know, and I'm like, I'm signing all these books. I'm like, I don't know how you guys do this, man. My wrist is about to fall off. I've only been here for like two hours. Um, and then my second store signing, um, was at infinity flux in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and had just as much fun. Um, there were a lot of people that came out to, to that store. Great store. If you're ever in Chattanooga, um, go check them out, um, at infinity flux, really cool people there. Um, uh, Andy Dugan, who's a fantastic artist, uh, done some work for Oni press. He, uh, he works there. Um, but yeah, they had a great community in Chattanooga and it was the same experience, man. Um, you got to talk to people that loved the book and loved the story and loved horror and loved Dracula. Um, so I'm hoping as COVID um, starts to hopefully clear up eventually and maybe we get a vaccine um, or whatever and it goes away, uh, you know, hopefully we get to do cons again and we get to go do more store signings because that's what I want to do, um, you know, because again, the key to my success here with this book is going to be all about the relationships I build with people um, because nobody is buying this book because Rich Davis's name is on it. Nobody knows who I am unless they listen to the Escape Pod podcast. And then, of course, they know everything. They will. I hope so, man. But and if they, they do, it's going to be because I'm going and doing these face to face things. I'm getting to know people. Um, and so your listeners out there, if you guys want to talk to me, you can hit me up uh, through the, the Cult of Dracula Facebook page. Um, whoever responds to you, it's either going to be me or it's going to be Henry. Um, so you can talk to us. We want to chat with you. We want to hear what you think. We want to, if you hated it, we want to know if you loved it, we want to know um, if you didn't pick it up, we're going to say, go do, go pick it up. You know, right. but um, you know, we, we just, we really want to build relationships um, because that's, that's going to be the key to where we're ultimately able to go with this. Well, and then go to cult Dracula.com. You've got all your links and everything are right there on the page. Mm -hmm. Easy to find, easy to get to. So, and uh, reach out to him and talk to you. He really does want to hear from you. So, that's uh, that's rare. A lot of times they're like, you know, oh no no, I'm too far too busy. <laughs> <laughs> but you, but people, I mean, if you want your product out, you got to work for it, and yeah. uh, and if, and you definitely see that you that you want to work for it, and that's great. That's all I know how to do, man. I I don't know how to do it any differently. <clears throat> do the hustle, Eric. Okay, come on, Tony, start dancing. <laughs> that's not gonna happen. This ain't TikTok. <laughs> that mustache looks like a dick dog baby. I'm just saying how long have you been working on that spirit gum do you use to, to hold it on uh, uh, spirit it, gum? It, <laughs> I, I, got, I got nothing for that <laughs> I'm just kidding buddy I love you um, we had somebody say it looked like it was fake because it's a different color than your, than your I can't your help beard. it man Mm. Put a little. Are you are you calling it as a scroll one? Are you just for men? What are you doing? That, yeah, that just for men gray stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and just dye it all black and get it. They're over only with. teasing you because, dude, that is a righteous mustache. It really is. It, really yeah, is. Man, man. The time it is awesome. It takes to grow that and to style it. 
Dude, that that is that is attention to detail, man. That is like some that's like the Zen garden where you're raking the sand just to rake it back again. That, that that's an accomplishment, man. I'm I'm digging it. I could yeah. not grow a mustache like that. I never thought I'd spend so much time staring at my own stupid face in the mirror <laughs> as I do now. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so now, yeah. you know, Tony in like um probably I don't know, maybe Six episode sixteen, the release of the book. There'll be a character in the background, and I have this big cheesy mustache. Like, <laughs> you know I, I, I know the guy who draws this book, and I think I can make that happen. I think I can make it happen. <laughs> New character there's, called there's a, there's a couple of scenes coming up where there's just a metric crap ton of dead bodies. So um, we're going to have to like put it. on those things. <laughs> I mean, this is horror, man. I mean, the first part, the first issue, kind of you get to dabble your toes in it. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's a true crime thriller and there's horror, you know, but when you start getting into, you get an issue two, there's more horror. You get into issue three, there's a lot of horror. And yeah, by yeah. four, five and six, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's really, it's out of control, um, you know, and things are moving. And what I really hope to achieve with this is, the, uh, you know, it's it's going to be an amazing graphic novel when people uh, finally get to consume it all at once. Oh, yeah. Uh, because the further you read into it, I want the readers to to lose more and more of their orientation. Like, I want them to to not not exactly know where they are or when they are or what's going on. There's there's going to be a level of confusion that is intentional and it's all going to make sense in the end when you get the payoff um, because, you know, we're introduced in issue one. We kind of, we, it's kind of like a, if you're playing a video game, this is the tutorial. We introduce you to, this is a broken narrative. You know, it's Tarantino style, the timeline, it's not consistent, A, B, C, D, E. You know, you're going to jump, back in time and forward in time. And so things are going to be happening that haven't happened yet. And so, and as we go further, we want you to feel more and more and more disoriented because that's what's happening to the people in the story, because the closer they get to this primordial force that is Dracula, the more influence that force has over them and the more disoriented. And so it's almost like it's sucking you into the cult. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I can't wait until that unfolds. Yeah. I'm, well, I'm already a cult member, so I am in that feeling. Have you gotten me up your handshake and gotten your uh, initiation kit? <laughs> you guys not, that still yet. Waiting. <laughs> <laughs> it's autographed. Kid, oh, just kid. <laughs> yep, absolutely. I, I'll do that. I will send you guys a couple autograph copies. I will absolutely do that. That would be awesome. Here I am sucking up. Why? <laughs> Why? But no, it's uh, it's it's awesome. We we man, I just uh, you know, and thank you so much for uh, for being on on tonight too. Oh, hey, uh, um, Jacob from yeah. uh, Source Point just popped in. Um, oh, nice. Hey, what's up, Jacob? Hey, right, look at that. Oh, I'm excited yeah. to be working with you too, man. Very nice, very nice. Welcome, uh, welcome, Jacob. And uh, I tell you, it's um, we're all very excited uh, um, for the level of uh, it's professionalism, and um, I mean, it's just creativity is just uh, it's off the it's off the charts, dude. You're, you're you know, like I said, all these great people that you have assembled to put this out and to work with you on wow. this project. I mean. You got to sit back and think you're really blessed. I mean, oh, because it's, it's awesome. There, there is no, there was no reason why these people should have picked up the phone or answered an email from me, let alone actually working with me. I am, I mean, I'm just a dude. I'm a small town kid from Middle Tennessee, came from nowhere. And now I'm working with Georges Genty and Henry Martinez and Ed Dukesher and um, and Tiffany Groves and David Sanchez and Gula Nemeth and, um, you know, uh, 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 Alan Qua. I mean, there is no possible universe where these people should be working with me, but in this universe they are. So I love string theory. Uh, you know, I'm the, uh, I'm the, I'm the odd universe <laughs> where this actually happens in every other universe. I'm just some schlub working at, at, at Walmart or something, but, um, but not, there's anything wrong working at Walmart, but uh, you know, but in this universe, I get to work with some really fantastic people. I get to publish a comic book through source point press. 
Um, it's going to be in previews, which I cannot wait to get that copy of previews because I'm probably going to just go buy like 10 of them um, because my book's going to be in it. <laughs> and people are actually reading Cult of Dracula, man. And now we're going to get, because of Source Point, we're going to get the opportunity to introduce a whole new segment of the comics community uh, to this book. Man. And and um, like I said, I don't know when the 15 minutes is up, but I'm enjoying it. Well, yeah, I don't think it's going to be a big time is, soon. Yeah, previews has got to be huge. That's what I say, you know, going back to when I was in comics, it was like when we saw the new, the thick previews come mm -hmm. out, it was just like, I got to have that. I got to see what's going on. And and to, to me and my friends, it was like, if it's in previews, it's got to be good. Yeah, I mean, it, it gives yeah. you a sense of legitimacy, you yeah. know, um, and, um, you know, that was one of the things we ran into, um, you know, you know, marketing it in the initial push, it was a huge overcome um, because, you know, here we are, I'm nobody, the the company that we're working with, this is their first outing. Um, you know, they've created a lot of comics, but they've never published a comic before. Um, so, you know, it was a lot of work just to even get people to listen to us um, and to hear the pitch. But, you know, now with previews, that's going to give us a stronger foundation to stand on. Um, and, um, you know, a little more of that industry legitimacy, but we're still going to have to put the work in. We're still going to have to call the shops. We're still going to have to build the relationships and we're still going to have to put that, that same work ethic into it this time, um, that we did the first time. And hopefully that's going to lead to more success and more people picking up the book. Um, and then ultimately people picking up more of source points books because we need to support the indie, uh, small press. Oh, yeah they're putting out the best comics in the in the game yeah and then and, and, and you i think you're going to fit right in with that with the group of uh of uh, material they already produced so that's oh, uh, that's excellent it, it is really the perfect company because their um you know their commitment is to producing the best stories in horror sci-fi and pulp i love all of those things and mm -hmm. Dracula. It's not really sci-fi, but it's definitely got some pulp elements. It's definitely got a lot of horror elements. Um, so I am so honored um, and proud to be working with these guys. And then, you know, they've got guys like Frank Gogol over there doing No Heroin and Dead End Kids. And they've got such a cool lineup of other books. They've got the new Gloomhaven book um, coming out, um, which is an adaptation of the tabletop game. Um, you know, and it's introducing a brand new character. So it's going to be a super key issue. Um, so guys get to your local comic book shop and ask them to order Gloomhaven, ask them to order Dead End Kids, the suburban job from Frank Gogol. Um, pick up Source Points uh, section of previews, check them out. They're putting out some amazing books. Um, and that's all before Cult of Dracula even hits shelves, man. I'm a, I'm a huge supporter of their company, big fan, um, and um, really, really happy to be working with them. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Rich, man, we are um, truly uh, want to thank you uh, for uh, reaching out to us again and, uh, and letting us uh, giving us the update and uh, and coming back on and spending uh, your Friday night with us for a little while. We uh, we, do, we we do enjoy it. And um, like I said, as as things uh, you know progress uh, for you, we, we really do um, want to. Um, you know, stay in the loop if, uh, you know, if, I mean, someday you'll be, be maybe too big to come on our little podcast. That's okay. But yes, you are. Yes, yes, you are. Especially when I uh, think a movie, TV series, those kind of things start happening. I really think, uh, I really think you're going to extremely blow up. Uh, but, uh, but we're interested. We're, we're excited to talk about all those things too, as, uh, as it grows. And of course, more issues. And, uh, you know, when, when you, you know, get to the, I don't know, and other projects you got coming up too. We're, we're excited for all that. So Absolutely. please, uh, please Absolutely. come back on and, and share those things with me and Tony. We, uh, we love being able, this is the, this is the kind of, um, you know, content uh, that, that we talk about. We talk about, uh, you know, all, all different kinds of, um, you know, I interview some really interesting people and, uh, and this is definitely uh, one of them on top of the list. Right on. We enjoy talking about so. Well, I'm absolutely humbled to be here, and I'll come back anytime. Anytime you you'll have me. I, I love talking to you guys, um, awesome. and uh, I want to see how Tony's mustache progresses. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, eventually, be able to tie it behind his head. What? Right. <laughs> I'm waiting for yeah. it. Glad to be here, man. 
Awesome. Thanks, man. Thanks, Rich. Okay, Tony, have a good night, uh, everybody. Uh, thank you all for being here on uh, the Escape Pod podcast, and uh, we'll be back. Uh, we'll be back real soon. Don't forget to check out our website, outbreakpodcast.com. Plus, check out the uh, cultofdracula.com website for all the latest information uh, about the comic book coming out. And, uh, and don't forget to message Rich. He will get back with you and uh, be nice to him because uh, he's a nice guy. <laughs> Thanks, right, guys, and, and happy right. Jason Day, everybody! It is Friday the thirteenth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Friday the thirteenth. How rad is that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, love it. See ya. Uh, see you guys. Right. Bye, guys. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode of Escape Pod. If you enjoyed it, please like the episode and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you would like to be a part of future podcasts, then email us at outbreakpodcast at gmail.com. And be sure to visit our website, outbreakpodcast.com, for more episodes, show notes, photos, and other podcasts on the Outbreak Podcasting Network. That's outbreakpodcast.com.